Thank you.
Good morning, everyone, and um, welcome to chapel. If you would, please join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings. Thank you for your great love and care. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all that you do, and for all that you've given. Renew our spirits and fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you every day. We give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we will hear from Pastor Adriana Hernandez. Um, she has been a licensed local pastor in the Desert Southwest Conference since 2019. She currently serves as the associate pastor at First UMC in Gilbert, Arizona. She is the mother of three adult children and has four very handsome grandsons. Adriana is pursuing her Master of Divinity at Islip University and is working towards ordination as a deacon. She has worked in the behavioral health field for over 25 years as an administrator in group homes and outpatient treatment centers. There is a vocational intersection and intersection happening between her goal of being a deacon and her role of in her new role, excuse me, as CEO and founder of Grace Outreach Center. This nonprofit offers a holistic view of mind, body, and spirit for individuals and for the community. Her joy and passion for ministry is to serve communities, connecting resources, talent, spiritual development, and mental health awareness. This humbling space where everyone is empowered by God's grace, love, and mercy. Pastor Adriana, we welcome you greatly. and We appreciate your presence here with us today. Let us now proceed to the opening hymn.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The Lamb has overcome. Today's scripture comes from James chapter 4, verses 1, to, 1 through 10, the First Nations version. Where do the wars, fights, and arguments among you come from? Do they not come from the selfish desires that wage war in your bodies? You want what you do not have, so you kill for it. You want what belongs to others, but you cannot get it from them, so you fight and wage war. You do not have because you do not ask the Great Spirit. When you ask for things, you do not receive them because you ask for the wrong reasons, wanting to satisfy your own selfish desires. You are unfaithful people. You must know that if you become friends with the ways of this world, you make yourself an enemy of the Great Spirit. Do you think our sacred teachings have no meaning when they tell us that Creator's Spirit in us longs for us to be faithful and true to Him? But his gift of great kindness is more than enough, just as our sacred teachings also say, the great spirit stands against the proud and arrogant, but he shows great kindness to the humble of heart. So humbly follow all of creator's ways. Make your stand against the evil trickster, and he will turn and run from you. Draw near to the great spirit, and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands clean of your broken ways and purify your hearts and minds from trying to walk two different roads. Cry out in your misery. Be sad and weep. Turn your laughter into sadness and your joy into tears. Humble yourself in the sight of the Great Spirit, and he will lift you up to a place of honor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for reading this scripture. This morning for chapel, our topic is forgiveness. And as Easter people, we are still basking in the glow of celebration on Easter morning. But together, we started our journey, our Lenten journey, this year uniquely on Valentine's Day. In our own ways, in our own spiritual paths and traditions and customs, we start off this Lenten journey in a way of exploring and reflecting and thinking about those final days of Jesus, thinking about the path towards the cross. It's a very open time. It's a time where we are to look into our everyday lives and think about what is causing problems? What is keeping me from being close to God? How can I express or comprehend and process what Jesus went through then that impacts me today. We have this ability as people who have been through multiple Easter celebrations to understand what is about to happen. It gives us hope and it gives us direction as we contemplate that walk towards the cross. Holy Week is a very special week and it culminates all those thoughts together. We find ourselves on Good Friday looking up at a cross, looking up at a human being who walked the earth 
someone we could relate to, someone that we found wisdom in, someone that impacts our lives today. And although we know there is this complexity of man and divine together, on Good Friday, we look up at a very dark world and see a human being who's taken on the sins of the world. There's darkness, darkness for hours. And it is a time for us to really understand, even attempt to understand the suffering, the pain, the obedience, the love that is poured out for each one of us today for what happened in that moment. But hours later, we find ourselves celebrating death being conquered. We celebrate it in a way that has us spending time with friends and family. Worship is filled with lively, joyful music. And we have this understanding that our God loved us so much. Probably one of the most popular scriptures, God loves us so much that he gave us his son, his one and only son, that we may have eternal life. As we stare up at that cross on Friday and celebrate few days later, we really do find ourselves as Easter people being very comfortable walking beyond the cross into our daily lives today. And there, the internal war of forgiveness rages on. We know what we are called to do. We know we follow a God who fills us with love and grace and mercy every single day in all parts of our lives and we have the greatest example to do that ourselves, but it's a struggle. At the beginning of chapter four, James says, where do the wars, fights, and arguments among you come from? Do they not come from the selfish desires that wage war in your bodies? Again, we have this example we're trying to live into. But at the same time, we're in this world, we're around us, around us. You can't turn your TV on or be on social media and not see pain, not see injustices, not seeing marginalized people being constantly hurt, people being dehumanized. Within our own worlds, we deal with grief and loss. We deal with physical ailments and diseases. We deal with mental health issues, shame and hurt and fear. The scripture asking us to look at what is surrounding us that wages war. And sometimes it just doesn't feel like selfish desire that we want those things to go away. It's logical that we would want cancer to go away. It's logical that we don't want this person to pass away. We want to be with them longer. Those don't seem like selfish desires. What the scripture is telling us is to look at why we want it, is to look at to gain an understanding of what we are seeking or what exactly are we asking God for today? Do we want this person healed for our own selfish purposes or do we want this person healed in the way God's will is calling it to be? The wage of forgiveness inside of us is a hard place because with Easter, our heart is filled with love and joy and peace and the promises that God has provided for us. But our brains sometimes get focused on what's the just thing and what's the needed thing. When we stand and think about what we're looking at the cross of a person and a savior who took on our sins, sometimes it's easier for us to identify the sins of others than our own sins. It's easy for us to point out things that have hurt and that are frustrating and that are bring us to our knees sometimes. And when we want what we don't have, the scripture says, so it you kill for it. And sometimes that's what forgiveness does. If you don't find a way or an avenue to forgive, it kills the peace and joy within us. We allow what we want, those desires to overtake who we are, and we don't put our trust in God. We don't put our trust in finding the things inside of us that we can control. 
in finding the things that we can prepare ourselves for and forgive. And we say forgive very easily, like it's a simple thing to do. And it is so complicated. It requires us to call out and say the things that need to be forgiven. It calls out for us to look inside of us and find what is taking away our peace. What is it that rages war within us that we could just hand over to God today and trust that it's going to be okay? When we talk about forgiveness, there are so many articles you can find on the benefits of it. It improves your blood pressure. It improves your patient patience. It limits being angry. It makes you sleep better if you forgive. It makes you feel more motivated and willing to take on the world in a different way. It clears out your brain from things that you are focusing on and fixated on. Forgiveness is a way to physically give you energy, physically make you more peaceful, physically to be able to lift up burdens and give them, give them away. Forgiveness opens up ways for you to spiritually be changed. It allows for peace to live within you, opening up your heart for more love. Forgiveness allows your spiritual development to pull you closer to God. It allows you to see the blessings in our world and to hear God's voice more clearly if we let go of the war within us. Our spiritual development leads to loving a God in a way that transforms our daily lives. There are some things that we see that are out in the world we have no frame of reference to fix or repair. And that on ourselves in itself can take away our hope. To be in relationship with God requires us to forgive ourselves and those around us. It requires that to happen to free us up to be in relationship, to allow the light of Christ that's within us to show more to others. Within the scripture of James, he gives three pieces of advice. The first one is his gift of kindness is more than enough. The mercy and grace he provided to us on the cross is more than enough for anything we will bear today. It is a way for us to understand and be centered that to have gratitude for the things that we have done that have been forgiven allows us to express gratitude for others. That kindness is meant to be not as a magic wand and take away our sins. That kindness is meant to be a way for us to get through the day to cut through the trials and the pain and the suffering and to know that no matter what I face today, the grace God has provided for me, that kindness is enough. The scripture says to go humbly and follow our creator's ways. We're called to read scripture. We're called to learn and to study. We're called to be with one another in community and find ways for us to follow God's word. For us to know God's word is to follow it, is to live it. And the scripture is telling us to humbly do that, to find ways to be engaged and very intentional in saying, I am today going to attempt to follow God in this way. Doing it humbly means we're not going to do all 73 things that we need to do. It's to be in conversation with God and say, okay, today I am focused on this. Today, your kindness and mercy and grace, when I mess this up, because there's a likelihood I could mess this up, you are still with me. You are still moving forward with me. And I'm going to trust that I as attempt to do this, God will be at work in my midst. The third thing the scripture says is to draw near to the great spirit. We can't do this on our own. Forgiveness is something that we do over and over and over again. And again, in the world that we live in, we try really hard and we forgive someone, but maybe it's represented to us in a different way. We may forgive, but the world doesn't let us forget and we get reminded. 
and those wounds get reopened and the wounds get challenged us in a way. But we need to draw nearer to the spirit, nearer to the spirit to understand, God, I've done what I'm supposed to do. I am putting in the work and I need to stand closer to you, to your light, to your sustenance, to your power, to really help this forgiveness stuff stick. It's a challenge in our daily life. The scripture continues with wash your hands clean of your broken ways and purify your hearts and my hearts and minds from trying to walk on two different roads. Sometimes as Easter pe people, we are very comfortable in walking on that road where we're celebrating the resurrected Christ. But part of that road is to understand the cost of what it took to get there. It's to understand our own contributions and sin and transgressions that led a person, a savior, to take on those burdens for us. So as we clean and wash our hands, as we try to prepare our brokenness, it's a way for us to be centered in knowing we are fractured people today. We are fractured with things we have done inside of us and we are fractured in what the world has heaped upon us. For most of us, we don't get up and we start our day thinking, hey, I am going to hurt someone today. It's really early in the morning, and I haven't left my house yet, so maybe I haven't hurt anyone just yet. Or maybe I have triggered someone with my words this morning or unintentionally said something. We are created as part of this big community. We are created to work together. And for me to know that I don't want to hurt anybody, that I don't want to inflict or open a wound for somebody, is for me to be as close to the spirit as I can and listen to the wisdom of things that I should say or things that I shouldn't say. Listen to the wisdom of someone that I should call and reach out to and listen when the spirit is telling me that I really need to sit quietly next to this person and just give them comfort and peace. For us to know that we are all together celebrating a risen Christ is to know that we all are meant to love and take care of one another. Forgiving what is within us, and forgiving what is around us, frees up our hearts for more peace and more joy and more connection with God. Again, not an easy thing to do. The scripture says that we are to cry out in our misery. We are to be sad and weep. We are turned to turn laughter into sadness. That last one seems a little odd to me that why we would turn laughter into sadness. But I think part of it is, as we go through life and we sort of mask ourselves, it's this thing that when people ask, how are we doing? We say, I'm fine. We're okay. We smile and we laugh through our day when inside there's this turmoil of hurt. And there's just turmoil of grief and sadness and discomfort. And if we are called to share and be closer to God, we need to cry out what we really, really need forgiveness for and what we really, really need help with. Again, it's so much easier to point out what others have done. And I, my only recommendation would be is if you're going to cry out and we make a list, find a way to find quiet time with God and say, okay, if I'm going to do this, God, let me make an intentional list of what I need help with. Because I can't do this on my own. I can't figure out a way to be stronger and closer and to be your light in the world if I allow the darkness of sin to consume me. And sometimes we let laughter show than to be vulnerable enough to say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. And if I'm going to turn laughter into sadness, I need to be able to provide that sadness to the creator who is waiting for me, to the creator who's already offered me so much kindness that everything is forgiven. This is a safe place for me to share. 
The blessing today is to understand that forgiveness is necessary. It's necessary to free our hearts to love one another. And if we're honest, there's days we don't love our neighbors. There's days where we just don't want to run into that person because they make us crazy. But even though I don't know what that person's going through, I do know that person is created in God's image. That person is a child of God. We practice our faith and our worshiping of the creator in different ways, different traditions and different denominations. We interpret scripture through our own perspective and eyes. But the thing that holds true is that we are all children of God. We all serve a purpose here on earth. And to allow forgiveness to take a portion of our lives, to reflect and to comprehend and to give that to God opens us up to be more, to be more in the world, to have a faith that allows us to be stronger, to be confident, and to be comfortable in the peace that can be ours. Peace be with you today. Find a way for forgiveness to reshape you, and to give you comfort and joy. For us to understand what God wants us to do today and tomorrow is to walk on this path, on the one path of calmness, the one path of forgiveness, of grace and mercy and love. It's so easy for us to be fixated on the other path where we want to battle wars, where we want to win things, where we want the right things done. To know we are part of creation, to know is that it is all in God's hands. And I can do lots of things, but it needs to be done at his will, with his purpose. And to do that, I need to stand sometimes in the darkness and the shadow of the cross and name forgiveness. Name things that I myself need to be forgiven of. Name things that I need to forgive of others that just has a chokehold on who I am as a follower of Christ. I can't fix everything. I cannot. But the living God who sacrificed all for us surely can today. Identify forgiveness that you would like to see in your life today. Give it over to God. And in his kindness, if you fail at it, he will let you try it again. We are one in him. Praise be to God today. In prayer, let us reach out and understand that peace is to be ours. The sacrifice of this Easter season is for us to live a life transformed, transformed in kindness, transformed in grace and mercy. Peace be with you today. Pastor Hendricks, uh, we are so grateful that you came today for us. It's so appropriate, uh, Pastor, that uh, leading to the general conference, uh, it is so appropriate that you could uh, give us this message of encouragement, of forgiveness, uh, which is what we need a lot in during general conference time. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for thank coming, you for reminding coming. us and encouraging us. Please pray for us. Sure. We have a journey to do, and uh, I'm going to thank you again for coming in. Will you be there at the general conference? Uh, I will not be there. I will okay. I will watch online as much as I can, but... Okay, watch us on and uh, pray for us, uh, Pastor. And again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And, uh, thank you. All have a blessed day. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Peace be with all of you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.